everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, and it's Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to all of you uh, out there. Um, it's a nice little holiday, a good day to appreciate your significant other and, uh, and not take for granted as we always do, so I hope you're enjoying today. And uh, today we have a few things to cover, a, a kind of a mishmash because... Uh, uh, some things during the week. Uh, Wednesday's video went real well. I'm, I'm glad you really enjoyed that wrench, but I'll show you how that works in a little while. I found the spring for it. And um, also we have a couple of things to talk about the vice. I got to service my great grandfather's vice and talk about a motor questions. We got a few things to get to. It should be a nice episode. Let's get right to okay, it. Okay, so I found a uh, spring. This is how the wrench was work. You push down on here, your thumb, that opens it up. And to uh, operate the wrench, you place it onto a nut like this. And then you, it'll clamp down by itself, as you can see here. And uh, you just rotate it like this, and this is how it works. So uh, I've been playing with it for a little while. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it does work. And, uh, you know, something a little bit different, I guess. I don't know how much of these sold, but that's the wrench from last week, from Wednesday. Okay, next up, real quick, I want to just talk about oil cans. We, we discussed it the other day when I bought a, a vintage oil can, but... You know, these are called tins in the collectible industry, and a lot of they've become quite collectible, the tins, the old tins. And, you know, because they have vintage graphics, some of the older graphics were really nice, so a lot of people will collect the empty ones, put them around the shop and stuff, and they're nice. But the funny thing is, I've never had luck, especially with a lot of these, uh, like the 3-in-1 with these spouts up here. They always seemed, that always was a leak point here, and a lot of times you would turn it up, here's one, Look at this, you know, you, you're going to put oil in. Next thing, you got oil trickling out here, you know, around the top. And it's always been a pain for me. So uh, the search of the perfect oil can. Now, I've had good luck with these. And I've heard some of you say that, you know, you haven't. But uh, these I, I found not to be leaking around the cap here, the new plastic type. And uh, I think the, the brand new ones are a, a clearer that you could see through it, but uh, this one here is a little bit older. Uh, but I've had really good luck with this as far as uh, the application, how it works. Uh, here's another one I had good luck with. This one here is a, a Marvel Mystery Oil. Now it says lubricating oil, you see that on there? And I called the company one time and I asked them, I, I spoke to a nice guy there uh, who was working at Marvel and I said, is there any difference between this and the big you know, the Marvel Mystery, you buy in the quartz. He says, no, it's the same thing. It's just packaged in a smaller container. So uh, Marvel Mystery Oil is a good lubricating oil. Um, this is, you know, the motor oil. Same thing. I've had good luck with this. And, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll tend to put oil into a, a, a separate container here. This one here, these are nice because I like the, the section here because you can actually see, see the oil. You can see it coming up. And you know when it's getting to the top there. So I like that part of these. Um, one thing, this here, they came out with a couple years ago. I, I never get used to using these. But this has one of those spouts that you could pull out like this. You see? And uh, you can have the oil come. You see the oil coming down by my glove there? And you can see where it's coming. And then you could push it back in. Uh, kind of gimmicky. But, you know, I guess for certain applications it would be good. One thing I always notice about oil cans is that... or I never liked the design. I, I, I'm telling you, it's got to be a better design. First of all, this, the footprint of this oil can, when you put it down, because it's top heavy, you know, it's got such a, a thin footprint here, it tends to do this and, and knock over, and it's not a good design, you know? I mean, this one's a better design because it's more stable, you know? Whereas this one here, it's, it's not as stable, you know? It'll always drop over or something, so... There's got to be a better design. I don't know why they didn't come up with it. The old metal cans, when they start getting loose, you know, sometimes you, 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 they get dented up because you squeeze them trying to get them out. A big leak point around the top here. You know, as you know, they're always getting filthy because they're big dust attractors in the shop. I just wanted your thoughts. Did you ever come across a really good oil can yet? Okay, I'm down here. I got to do a little shop maintenance. I always, uh, every couple months, I take a great grandpa's vice apart lubricated i use this all the time look at this massive piece of iron steel you know uh this isn't this isn't cast it's like a wrought iron this is uh this is such a great vice but you see over here the rails this is what it runs on so you got to take some you know i use some wd-40 and uh and then you just got to wipe this down make sure you get all this you know crud and everything off because that's what it rides back and forth on until it comes up clean you do both of that you do the bottom 
and then we use my 50-50 uh, grease and straight dirty motor oil, lube everything up and then run it back and forth. I do that every few months. One thing nice about this vise, it has a true six inch opening here. That The threads are already buried a, an inch and a half into the back of the vise. And so you have a true six inch opening and you don't usually see that on vices this size. This is just a, a spectacular vise. Uh, greased all the rails, uh, used a, again, uh, the 50-50 grease and oil and I put on the threads here. And now, uh, even over down here, you see there's a hole for lubricating the uh, the shaft down here. But I always put a little bit of oil here, and then we just run it back and forth. And 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 just look how smooth this is. I mean, it's unbelievable. Hundred and I don't know, hundred and twenty year old vice. I mean, it just is spectacular. I never seen a vice, you know, that's that's so perfect. The only bad thing about this vice. Is it doesn't have anything to protect the screws, you know, the uh, the threads of the screw, so swarf and things like that could get in there. But uh, that's why I always keep a rag over the uh, the threads like this, and uh, I do that so that nothing gets on the threads. But uh, I, you know, I wish I had a better way to do it, but I've been doing that for years, and it seems to work out well. Now, the best thing I ever did to accessorize this vice is to put these grommets on here. You see here. Now I did this, uh, God, about 25 years ago, but uh, I found these grommets and, and you have to put them in hot water to it so that you can get them over the end here and they, they fit just right. But when otherwise, every time when you have this handle come down, it makes a bad bing, you know, and, and it's just annoying, but this is so nice, those grommets. So if you can get them, this is the way to go. You know, some people use leather, whatever, but anything to stop that slamming of the handle because, uh, but the grommets work really nice, the rubber. Okay, next up, a few people ask me things about buffer motors. There's some, a point that I wanted to make on a few of these older motors that you have to be, uh, leery about and let me show you what i'm talking about now here was a motor that i salvaged out of my uh my girlfriend's father's garage when it was in there and it was pretty much for but i, I freed it up and it, it works but let me give you a, a, a quick tip about motors not all motors are the same and you cannot believe these labels and i'll tell you why just like the old car the muscle cars in the 60s they used to uh they used to gauge the horsepower in different ways uh like chrysler would take the horsepower from the rear end and Ford would take the horsepower right from the transmission. So, you know, it all depends, you know, I don't care. You can always tell on the track which car would had more torque or horsepower, you know? So it's the same thing with a motor. Um, this one here says three quarter horsepower. Can you see that? Now, three quarter horsepower is usually, that's a big enough motor and stuff. And uh, you can see the rest here, but here's the thing, you see amps, four amps. That is a good indication of how strong a motor is going to be, is how much amperage it draws. And 4 amps is not a lot. And I'll show you the problem that a lot of you might have when you buy inexpensive Asian motors. If you're buying a motor for $29 at, you know, brand new, and then you're wondering why you don't have the torque, and it says 3 quarter horse, that's not, this is in no way a 3 quarter horse, and let me show you why. Now, I'm going to turn the motor on, and you're going to see the RPMs are up there. You know, it does do, you know, 3,450 RPMs, so it'd be great for running a fan or something. But anytime you put any torque, any anything that uh, requires torque, it's going to slow this wheel down, and I'll show you what it looks like on a bad motor. Come on, if I could stop this with my hand, right? If I could put my hand up and stop this motor, something's wrong, right? Now, that could be just because it's an old, worn-out motor, whatever the case, but I, I know a lot of you have had this problem with the mismarked motors. You cannot believe the horsepower and anything, you know, and, and sometimes even when you go by ratings or reviews, you know, some people don't know. If they're only using it for a fan, they it wouldn't be affected. It's only when you're putting any kind of strain on the motor, so... Always look at the amperage. I find that to be a pretty good telltale. If it's drawing six to eight amps, you know that it's uh, using some power and that means it's usually transferred 
into torque or, or you know, that you won't have this problem. But when you got four amps and under for a motor, it's usually, uh, it's not drawing a lot of power, so it don't have a lot of now, power. Now, just to show you what I mean, here's a half horsepower motor. Now, this, this motor is... Uh, a full quarter horse less than that other one I just showed you. This motor weighs a lot more. And if you notice the amperage, it, it draws 7.8 amps. So it's draw it's drawing almost twice as much power. It's a less horsepower. You see what I'm saying? You got to be leery. You can't trust. And Craftsman's a good name. They're not going to mess around. But some of these other foreign Asian companies, you can't trust what they're putting on there. Okay, now, uh, as you know, I, I leave a lot of my equipment unbolted for one reason or another but one thing that you need to bolt down at least one of your vices should be bolted down because you need to obviously even the clamp down one isn't as strong as when you bolt it to a good solid bench and um you know how some people put soft drawers in i mentioned this in a video a while back but uh, a good thing to have too, because this is a, a very strong surface up here and uh, you don't want to be banging on the top of your vise. A lot of times what I have is I make up a simple, all you take is a scrap of wood. This is a two by six with a, uh, a two by three bolted to the bottom of it. You see, just like that. And, uh, what this is, is you can put this right into the vise like this and give it a quick tightening up. And now you have a real solid soft work base that you can you know, do, uh, uh, rivets on things like that. And it's, and you could bang on it and it's, uh, it's very solid and it's, it's a really a good surface. And then, you know, again, you just pull it off and put it to the side and you got your vice back. So I suggest if you can make one of these, I think you'll really enjoy it. Just a small, you can make it as long as you want, but I like to keep it just about an inch over this, the jaw length. And it gives you good support because you're resting on top of the vise and you're not doing any damage to the vise. You can bang on this all day. Hey, just last up, I know this is turning into kind of a mosh, but it's Friday and it's Valentine's Day. Um, uh, you know, Bulldog, the English Bulldog, you know, sometimes we go through life and uh, things pop up in your life and you don't know why. My first introduction to the Bulldog was when I was uh, about uh, 10 years old, eight, 8 to 10 years old, 1972, 70. My father used to drive an oil truck and um, back then if you were in between stops or something or if you had enough seniority to pick routes, he would pick a, the route where I live and he'd deliver to my own house and then he would stop in for a cup of coffee or something like that, you know. And um, he used to drive a few different trucks, two oil was home, own, home oil. And there was six oil was like for buildings, things like that. And I remember the truck, I was fascinated by this truck. I used to leave it running in front of the house on a winter day or something. And I would go out there and climb in the truck and it would be running. And uh, I could remember that sound, that beautiful Mack truck sound. And I would sit in that truck and it had a, a, cushion, a, a shock absorber seat. And, and I remember that green dashboard and what all the chrome gauges and switches and levers i didn't know what i was looking at but boy was i fascinated and that stayed with me but i remember on the hood there was that mac truck insignia of uh, a bulldog and that's what their uh their mascot for mac truck was and i have a couple of those uh, hood ornaments but um then later on in life you know going into the marine corps the bulldog is the uh, mascot for the marine corps and uh you know guys would get tattoos and things like that and you know, there was always a bulldog on base, you know, that they would bring out and dress them up in little dress blues. And, you know, so bulldogs have been fast. I've been fascinated with them. And I was at that antique shop and I saw a uh, a bulldog, a metal bulldog. Let me show now, you. Now, when I was at that antique shop, this is the bulldog. I saw it sitting on a shelf and I saw it was metal. And I said, wow, look at that. You know, and right away I was attracted to it. You know, I, I caught my attention and uh, it did have a price on it. But I wound up paying ten dollars for this. Now, I felt when I my first thing you look at when you're at an antique shop, you want to make sure there's no damage or anything to it, and there wasn't any damage. And I'm feeling it; it has some weight to it. It's hollow, but I'm looking around at it and I'm saying I don't see any casting seams, which was indicative for like an aluminum cast. There's a little seam that runs here, but nothing that would look like anything that would be ground down. And I'm saying, geez, I said, well, you know what? I said I could take this and paint it. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing over here, around here, where his, uh, you know, in the bottom here, you could see that looks like, I said, man, this could be bronze. If this is bronze, that could be worth money or whatever, but not so much that's worth money, but it's just, it could be, you know, something that's a little bit more 
uh, worth the value of what I'm paying for it. So what I'm going to do, I was going to paint it, you know, but then I said, let me see, let me strip it down and see what it is underneath. Okay, now uh, you can see how it came out. We took all the paint off. Every, there was like three coats of paint on there, and it it tends to clog up a lot of the uh, beautiful lines, like all the hair lines and things like that, that the original sculptor put in here. But um, now I just want your opinion. What do you think I should do? You think I should paint it? You think I should leave it the way it is? Uh, here's what it looks like. You can take it, all the paint off. Went in with the Dremel wire brush to make sure I got everything off. It is a, uh, a beautiful little casting, isn't it? But uh, what do you think I should do with it? think I should, uh, like I said, I could paint it realistic looking with the brown and white, the tan. I could clear coat it. I could paint it gold, bronze. Just put your opinion down there. What do you think? Uh, I could leave it the way it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's not metallic. It's not magnetic. So, uh, but it don't feel like aluminum. It feels a little bit heavier, but I don't know what it is. You know, maybe it is aluminum. Who knows? And uh, look how nice the collar came out. This is nice. When you take all that paint off, look at Look, look at the buckle, the uh, how much time and effort they, they carved that buckle. Whoever did this job did a beautiful job. I, I always love carving and things like that. So let me know so what you So in think. closing, I hope you all have a very nice Valentine's Day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.